let's turn our attention to conformers. And specifically, we'll be looking at these through Newman projections. Now, conformers are isomers that have had a rotation about a single bond. And so the Newman projection is ideally situated to examine these. So a Newman projection, look down a single bond. And we draw the near atom as a point and the far atom as a circle. So to illustrate this, I'll draw a two carbon molecule. And this is the bond that we'll be looking down. So we're going to rotate this so that it's, uh, so that we're looking down that bond. And we'll call this carbon with the, the number ones around it, the first carbon or the carbon that we're going to have as the first atom. And then the second one will be the carbon that has the circle. So when we draw these, it looks something like this. We draw the first atom as a point and then we draw the bond connections to it. like so, and the second atom is drawn as a circle. And then we draw the bond connections to it. And since we're on the back atom, we do not extend the bonds into the middle point because that would indicate that they were on the first carbon. Just as another visual to this, I have a model kit here. And we can call this our first atom, which if I rotate it kind of like this, let's see here, yep, about like that. Then you can see here's carbon number one, there's carbon number two. And then we just rotate this like so, and you can see how Looking straight down that bond, we have the first carbons here, and or the substituents on that carbon, and we have the number two substituents there. And you can kind of see how that lines up there. So again, we're looking straight down this middle bond right here. And so we do not draw that bond because we're directly on top of it. Just like, as you can see here, as I'm holding it such that the camera is looking straight down this bond, you cannot see the bond right here. Same kind of concept. So now that we have that, let's look at some situations where we would use a Newman projection to look at something that is actually different because there's not that much that can be different when all of the substituents on each carbon are the same. And while we're looking at this, I'm going to bring up a concept called the dihedral angle because I'm gonna draw several of these Newman projections that have different angles on them.
all of these examples will use uh, one bromo two chloroethane. And I will just draw the Lewis structure for that. Okay, so I have a Lua structure for that. I also have a model kit prepared. So let's start with this configuration where the bromine is up here and the chlorine is down there. So when we draw the Newman projection, we're just looking right at, right down this bond right here and so we'll see and we can we can just kind of draw it right off of our model kit and this really illustrates the utility of having a model kit so here's our first atom with the point in the middle we have the bromine and then the two hydrogens the atom behind, we'll draw our circle. And then down here, we have the Cl, and then the hydrogens, like so. This is said to have an ang dihedral angle of 180 degrees. And you could consider it either positive or negative, just depending on which way you're rotating this. Now, let's try rotating this a little bit like that. So now, this bromine is directly in front of that hydrogen, and this hydrogen is directly in front of that chlorine. Now we'll have to offset it just a little bit when we're drawing it, but we understand that there's really two main configurations. The one where it's in between, that's called staggered, or there's an eclipsed configuration. And I'm going to draw one of those eclipsed configurations now. I'm not going to move our bromine from that position because it keep it'll help us keep track of what we've drawn. But now I'm going to draw the chlorine as if it's rotated a little bit in that direction the hydrogen, the hydrogen, like so. And this is to indicate that these are in the eclipsed configuration, or an eclipsed configuration. They have a dihedral angle between the bromine and the chlorine of 120 degrees. Next, we could continue rotating this around so that now we're back into a staggered configuration. So let's draw that. And this will be a 60 degree angle between the bromine and the chlorine. So we draw the bonds again in the middle. 
And generally speaking, you're either drawing an eclipsed configuration or a staggered configuration. And now we'll rotate the chlorine and the bromine such that they are into the eclipsed configuration of themselves, not eclipsed with another hydrogen. And that will be a dihedral angle of zero degrees because they are on top of each other. Now we could continue drawing another 60 degree Newman projection where the chlorine has rotated over into this position and then back into an eclipsed with that hydrogen and then finally back to our anti-configuration here. It's really unnecessary for this particular molecule. Now I'd like to go over a few of the names for some of these specific configurations. Now I noted that this is an eclipsed configuration. And this is also an eclipsed configuration. However, in this case, the bromine and the chlorine are eclipsed to each other. And so we could say the bromine and the chlorine are eclipsed. Here, it is an eclipsed configuration for the molecule, but the bromine is eclipsed with a hydrogen and the chlorine is eclipsed with a hydrogen. That has implications for the energetics of each configuration. When two groups of interest are 60 degrees apart from each other, we call this the gauche configuration. And it's part of a broader category, which is a staggered. Over here, we have the anti-configuration because they are on opposite sides of the molecule. This is also a staggered configuration because they're in between. Next, let's just briefly look at the energetics of each of these configurations. So I'll put it back into the anti-configuration and we'll talk about what's going to happen. In this configuration, all of the atoms have a little bit of space. So they're larger than this molecule or this model kit would have you think in terms of how much relative space they take up. Of course, this, this is a, a model that I can touch. It's much bigger than a molecule. But the, the space that this hydrogen takes up is, is much bigger than this little white ball is. And this bromine is much, much larger. Bromines are quite a large molecule. And chlorines are fairly large too. And so in this configuration, where they are anti and it's in a staggered configuration, it has the lowest energy possible because things are not bumping into each other. The electron clouds have room in this configuration. So this is the lowest energy configuration to put the largest groups anti of each other because essentially you put them on opposite sides of the molecule. They will not, the electron cloud from the bromine and the electron cloud from the chlorine will not run into each other at all. 
when we rotate this such that we have an eclipsed configuration, this bromine will start to run into that hydrogen and this chlorine will start to run into that hydrogen. And these hydrogens will run into each other a little bit, although significantly less than the bromines and the chlorines will. That will raise the energy of this configuration higher. We could relieve some of that by moving into the gauche configuration. But this is higher in energy than the anti because we're starting to interact the chlorines and the bromine. And those are larger molecule atoms. So they will take up more space. And so while this is the lowest energy level or energy configuration, this is the next lowest. So I'll just say this is number one. This is number two in terms of energy, it's, it's higher. And then when we start to get to an eclipsed, but configuration, this is higher than the gauche, but then we could go into the, what you might call a totally eclipsed, where the two very large pieces of the molecule, atoms in the molecule are eclipsing each other. This will be the highest energy. It will be difficult for the molecule to stay in this position because the electron clouds are going to run into each other. Uh, and especially since they're two very large atoms. So what you may see happen more often is of course this bond is free to rotate. I mean, I say free because there's no bond, double bond keeping it in position, but there's kind of a bumpiness to it. So every time I get to an eclipsed portion, that's a much higher energy configuration. Then when I'm rotating it here, that's a little lower. Then I have another bump, but not as high because I'm looking at a smaller atom on the other side of the bromines and chlorines. And then I get to my anti-configuration. This is the lowest energy configuration. And if I keep rotating around, now we're back into an eclipsed, that's higher. Into a gauche configuration, that's a little lower than the eclipsed. And then much higher would be eclipsing the two large atoms. So you may end up seeing this kind of bounce back and forth like so, and sometimes it might go all the way around, but if you have a big enough molecule or big enough atoms here, you can get it to where the barrier to rotate over, like to get into that eclipsed configuration where the large parts of the molecule are running into each other is just too high or it's blocked somehow because they're, they're just too big to pass each other. And then you can have uh, some interesting molecules come out of that. So this is just a look at conformers and looking at Newman projections and dihedral angles and energy configurations of those dihedral angles. So a lot packed into this video, but thank you for joining me and we'll see you in the next video.